welcome back, parents, to a conversation <laughs> oh, starter. Yeah, <laughs> we took a break, <laughs> but we're back, baby. Right? So, yeah, so we were off for Easter, and we had youth service again this past Sunday. Pastor Mario. Dawson, the youth leader. Walking behind the it. camera. <laughs> in a <laughs> different position. <so. laughs> yeah. It's a little different, because yeah. we are filming in the new youth Bible study room which was just recently finished. Um, a lot of the maintenance stuff has been finished since the work day, but the furnishing has been uh, finished since last week. Um, so we're utilizing the room. We're mm -hmm. gonna continue to film conversation starters in here, so it's gonna be fun. Yeah. Um, but all that to say, that's why it's awkward positioning. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not used to it yet. You try to find like a... Yeah. you know, a space. Yeah. <laughs> so we talked about, uh, well, we finished our, our, our series going through um, hearing the voice of God, hearing the voice of the Father. Mm -hmm. um, took a break on Easter, came back last Sunday or this past Sunday, and we did just a standalone message about prayer. And we just talked about the beauty of prayer. Mm -hmm. It wasn't planned, but the Holy Spirit just, connected, you know, what we were talking about with prayer, with Pastor Sam talking about prayer mm -hmm. on Sunday morning. That wasn't a planned thing. That's just the spirit. Um, so it was good. Mm -hmm. It was good. And uh, so brief recap, very, very quick. We looked at three uh, things about prayer that we tend to not really associate or even think or consider about prayer. Right. Um, the first one was prayer is more than just words, right? Right. Even like coming into the presence of God and not saying a thing mm -hmm. is still prayer. Right. Um, and we looked at like Hebrews 4, where it talks about come boldly before the throne of grace mm -hmm. and mercy, like this idea of coming. The invitation is to come. Mm -hmm. um, and the second thing is that prayer is a spiritual, it's primarily a spiritual activity. Mm -hmm. And so we talked a little bit about how sometimes because we are doing a bunch of physical things, mm -hmm. like we're talking with our physical mouths, we're taking our physical bodies into a physical place, mm -hmm. you know, we're doing all these physical things. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we could think like, oh, prayer is just a, a physical task mm -hmm. that Christians do or religious activity that Christians mm -hmm. do. Um, but it's, it's more than that, it's, it's a spiritual thing. And yeah. we looked at praying in the spirit, like Ephesians mm -hmm. 6, and what that means, which, I think that was a pretty good conversation on that. Yeah, we talked about like spirit-led prayer. <laughs> Wonder if this will stay in. Hello? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. All right, we're back. Break Anyways, in. that was Sam. Um, Pastor Sam calling. Yeah. Anyways. Third uh, point. Y yeah, third point. So first thing, prayer is more than words. Second thing, prayer is primarily a spiritual activity. Third thing, prayer is a persistent communication. So it's communication, mm -hmm. but it's persistent. <laughs> I was <just> laughing. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you laughing at, dude? Just a full phone call in the middle. <laughs> You're going to have to cut this now, too. <laughs> nah, we're leaving it all in. <laughs> We're leaving it all in, baby. We're back. But yeah, so so prayer prayer is persistent um, communication with yeah. God, and we talked a little bit about how sometimes we pray about something, we pray for something. Mm -hmm. After a while, maybe you know, it's not it's not seemingly getting answered mm -hmm. um, in the way that we want. So we kind of just we don't pray about it anymore, or we yeah. just bury it. Or we just pray about one thing, and we never pray about that thing again. Yeah. Or we move on to the next thing. Yeah, we only bring it up once, and mm -hmm. then just leave it there, Yep. waiting for it. Almost. Yep. So we looked at, for that, we looked at Luke 18, um, verses 1 through 8, where it talked about the... Um, Widow. The widow, yeah. I'm getting seeking confused justice. with the passage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, widow see, the parable of the widow seeking justice and how she is persistent with the unjust judge. Mm -hmm. And eventually, because she begins to annoy him, mm -hmm. he answers her. And basically, Jesus says, like, doesn't God care 
more than an unjust judge. Right. Of course, he's going to answer the prayers of those who cry out to him mm -hmm. for justice day and night. Yeah. And so we looked at that passage of how Jesus was actually saying, I want you to pray like that woman. Yeah, yeah he even says that as he's introducing the yeah. parable. He says, when you pray, mm -hmm. you ought to pray like this. Yep. Yep. So those are the things that we looked at for the beauty of prayer. Um, so I think today, well, this week, mm -hmm. whether it be today or whatever, this week, parents, whenever you have devotional time with your students, we're, we're just going to hone in on one of the points. I mean, you can hone in on all of them if you want, but one of the points, just the persistence of prayer. Yeah. The persistence of prayer. Um, and there's another passage for that. There is. Which is... You have it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was trying to see if you remembered it. Luke 15. Matthew 15. Matthew 15. <laughs> Luke 18 was the other one. Matthew 15 is the new passage to read with your student. <laughs> and if you really want to be challenged, read both Luke read, 18, yeah. 1 through 8, and read Luke 15, Matthew 20. 15. <laughs> Matthew 15. 21 through 28, Matthew. 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 And uh, I, I mean, I could give you like a brief idea of what it is. It's a Canaanite woman who's asking Jesus to heal her daughter. Um, and this isn't a parable. This is a real woman who's mm -hmm. coming up to Jesus and genuinely asking for something good. Mm -hmm. Genuinely asking for something that he's been doing like, this, his whole ministry is marked by mm -hmm. healing people from demon possession, healing people from sicknesses, doing all these things to verify him as the Messiah, mm -hmm. validate his Messiahship. And so this woman isn't asking anything out of the box for Jesus. Mm -hmm. She's not asking anything that Jesus hasn't already been doing for everyone else. But what we're going to find in the passage, what you're going to see is Jesus seems to be like awkward and weird mm -hmm. in this passage. Um, so, just one question, like with that, and I'll let you lead lead the parents on in this question, but because yeah. you asked a really good question in regards to it. Yeah, you already kind of hinted at the idea of the question, but in the passage, the Canaanite woman is asking for a good thing, and mm -hmm. Jesus even mentions that it's a good thing later on, and yet he still forces persistence out of her. And mm -hmm. we talked about persistent prayer. Yeah. And so a good question to ask your student is, why does God seek persistence out of us mm. for good things? Yeah. Um, you know, things that are in his will, things mm. that he declares to be good, and yet he desires a heart of persistence from us, even mm. for those things. Yeah. And I think to help you think about it, it can, can be an issue of the heart. Yeah. You know, where if you're only asking for it once, like we'll say like reading scripture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you only ask God once to help you with a desire for reading scripture, he might want you to really prove that desire to him mm. through persistent prayer, through yeah. asking daily, God mm. help me to read more. Mm. Um, instead of just asking once and expecting it to cover your whole life. <laughs> yeah. <you know>? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, boom. Right. No. No, I think, I think you're right. Like, there's something about being persistent in prayer that God is using mm -hmm. to mold our character in some way. Mm -hmm. Like, He wants some type of result by waiting mm -hmm. and making us wait. Mm -hmm. um, I think of like Isaiah, where it says, "Like, blessed are those who wait on the Lord." Right. Like, there is a blessing that's in waiting, um, and. God wants us to have that blessing, but we don't like waiting. <laughs> right. <laughs> and even waiting. with waiting, we don't like asking multiple times sometimes. No. You know, like, oh, you're going to make me wait and you're going to make me come back and ask <laughs> yeah. again. And know? bring it up again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I might not get it the way I want it to right now again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I may have to come back and ask again. Yeah. 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 God wants, God wants a persistent heart. Um, but all that to say, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. But 
And parents, you can help with this, helping your student understand the value of persistence in prayer. Mm -hmm. And again, you could share, I would say share any stories, any experiences mm -hmm. that you have of maybe like you were in a place where you were just like really praying for something for hours, years, days, whatever, and God just wasn't answering in the way that you were thinking he was going to. Mm -hmm. But you kept asking and you kept asking and even just talking about like what that did for you. Mm -hmm. More than getting the answer that you need, what did the persistence do to mm -hmm. your heart? And what did it do to your relationship with Jesus? So even just like unpacking some of that right. for your student would be yeah. immensely, immensely, yeah. immensely valuable. <laughs> yeah. Show them that you also have experience with that, yeah. you know, with having to be persistent in desiring something and praying for something yeah yeah leading by example mm -hmm. just like i did on youth service <laughs> <laughs> so but all that to say yeah uh parents i would say read luke chapter 8 verses 1 through 8 matthew 15 <laughs> verses 21 through luke 28 18. <laughs> what 18 1 through 8 that's what i said he said 8 <laughs> <laughs> Just put, put it on the screen. It'll so be everyone, on the screen. Everyone's clear. <laughs> we hope that you have some good conversation. Uh, quick uh, update, news. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to call this. News update uh, for youth group. Uh, this coming week, if your student is coming to youth group, they will be serving. Mm -hmm. No questions asked. Um, because we're doing the widow's dinner where the youth group is going to be serving the widows of CBC. And so students are going to help cook, students are going to help serve, like actually bring the food to the widows mm -hmm. um, as a form of just serving that generation, that group of people who are experiencing where they are. Um, and so it's going to be good. So next Sunday, it'll we need the students here by 4 p.m. The dinner is at 6 p.m., but we're going to be cooking everything here at the church. We're going to be mm -hmm. setting things up. So we need some time. So 4 p.m. instead of getting here at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. 4 p.m., not 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll be leaving a little later. They'll probably be leaving at about 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say be here by 8, 7.30, 8 o'clock. Um, but make sure they do not have dinner if they are coming because we're going to have quite a good home cooked meal. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, just a big update with that. So, we hope to see you students there. Yeah, see you then. See you then. Dawson? <laughs> no, we already cut minutes ago. Cue that <laughs> clip! <laughs>Hello, parents. This is Pastor Mario. Uh, thank you guys for joining us for this, this week's conversation starter. If you want more um, ways that you can engage with your youth, you could check out the uh, other conversation starters here on my side. Thank you guys for joining us. Hope you guys are doing well.